What's going on guys? So I am here at the Forest River Dealer Expo. This is where the dealers come to look for new products. You were looking at a product that I've never filmed before and one that I think you're really gonna wanna pay attention to because of how they've built this and what this is all about. Hang tight, you're not gonna wanna miss this video. I'll be right back. Okay, so before we look at the numbers, I wanna talk about what this is. So this is an east to west unit. You know, most east to west units, there's nothing super fancy, nothing super special about them. They're what you would kind of consider to be your traditional fifth wheel or travel trailer. But what you're looking at is the Alta Extreme 365. And it actually took a dealer coming up to me to explain to me what makes this thing so special. So first of all, again, before we get into the numbers, I wanna to point to one thing that's instantly gonna to speak to people. Three inch thick sidewalls, on a travel trailer. You heard me right, three inch thick sidewalls on a travel trailer. So these are considered to be extremely overbuilt travel trailers. Super, super tall, but still extremely overbuilt. Let's take a look at the numbers real quick. So this unit's gonna have a gross vehicle weight rating of 11,605 pounds and a cargo capacity of 2,716 pounds, a dry weight of 8,851 pounds, and it's gonna be 35 and a half feet long. So. It's actually lighter than I thought it would be, considering how tall it is and considering the fact that it uses a thicker sidewall material. That's pretty crazy. And even the thicker baggage doors. It is so cool to see a manufacturer who's taken the travel trailer space, the conventional travel trailer space, so seriously and actually made an extreme RV. Now, looking down here, this is interesting. So on a travel trailer frame, they've reinforced the shackle hangers, but I'm a little disappointed that I'm not seeing like a Cree 3000, a Moride upgraded suspension, a Lippert upgraded suspension, um, because I would have expected to see that. That's a failure point, and it's a, a something that's just gonna reduce the amount of shock and vibration that transfers from the chassis into the actual RV. So big suggestion to the folks over at East to West who make the Alta Extreme, you know, finish this package off. You put, already put great Goodyear Endurance tires on. Finish this package off by putting like a road armor with half inch thick shackle straps, greasable wet bolts. I think that's what's needed. But I would even say, go a step further. Throw torsion axles on this and even upgrade to a G-rated tire. I see no reason why something this large and this heavy can't have it. Now, Goodyear Endurance tires are great tires, they are, but they're still not a G-rated tire. They're not gonna be at that same level as like a Saloon or even a, just a higher, maybe the Cooper Work Series. And then now you're gonna have truly an extreme travel trailer, especially considering again how tall this is and the fact that it already utilizes great features like three inch thick sidewalls. Asdell construction, now it's foam insulation in here. So a lot of three inch thick sidewall RVs use a batten insulation. So this is foam insulation. It has Asdell on the outside, Asdell on the inside as well. All season climate guard, very, very cool what they're doing here. So let me step inside. So this is cool, this is interesting. So you have a bunk up top here, and I'm sure it lowers down somehow. I'll have to figure it out. It looks like it's stopped right now. Um, and this may be kind of a door. I'm actually kind of confused at what I'm seeing right here because this clearly drops down, but then you have these stoppers right here. So maybe I'm just missing it on what this does, or maybe they just put those there to keep it up for the show. I don't know, but it's confusing me. Uh, that said, you have a cool space back here. You also have another space, I believe, for a bunk as well. So you can actually run two bunks back here. And let me see what this handle does. Oh, I got it. So that's kind of creative. So you pull this down into this groove and then you pull this handle down. I have to say that did not do what I thought it was gonna do. I didn't fully engage it on that side, but that's super cool. This turns into a bunk area. You also have a desk back here. So that's cool. Whenever this bunk is collapsed over here, you have a really nice desk. I love the fact that they put blackout blinds on here as well. Over here, you have an absolutely enormous closet. I mean, this is a full walk-in closet with motion detection lighting. This is a great place to hang bikes. You could put a bike holder over there, put a couple bikes in here. You could put a folding e-bike or a couple of them in here and still have space above for whatever you need to store in here. Your big comforter, sheets, pillows, and things like that. All right, coming around here to the bathroom. So this is a wonderful size bathroom for a travel trailer. Really nice, great shower. Super, super tall ceilings in here. A lot of storage for towels and toiletry. Porcelain foot flush toilet. And that's a plastic toilet, but it's huge. A lot of space around here. 
and you even have space in the cabinet underneath. Plus you have two huge medicine cabinets as well. All right, coming around this way, you have your theater seating right here. You have your windows all around, as well as some storage up here. Because of the height of this thing, it's not as convenient to reach that as some shorter travel trailers. You have your TV in place here, small fireplace, sound bar, as well as more storage up top. Over here, you have your Everchill 12 volt French door cell dual drawer refrigerator with more storage up top. Coming around back, you have a booth style dinette. I love the fact that they have drawers in here and they are pretty dang long extending drawers. I'm not a big fan of just the cabinet. So having drawers here, I think is a huge win. All right. All right, so this converts into a bed as well. Massive windows again. You have storage here, storage here. Coming around this way. Nice thermofoil countertops, stainless steel single basin sink. You have a four burner gray stone drop-in uh, stove oven combo. This is really nice. Or this is a GE profile, which looks a lot like the Greystone. That's nice. Up here, you're gonna have a GE microwave. I don't believe this is a convection microwave. More storage all the way around. You have your cabinets up here. Love the fact that they put drawers. A lot of travel trailers lack drawers, and I always like to see drawers in travel trailers. More storage there. You have a spot for a trash can down here if you want. Plus you have a flip up counter extension here at the end. On demand suburban water heater, thermostat here as well. 15K AC standard. You have another AC up here. Plus you have your window over here. Lots of cabinets and drawers all the way around. They've done a very, very interesting job. Nothing big though. So that's the challenge. You're not gonna be able to fit lots of big clothes into these, but there's small drawers everywhere. You got little end tables over there, USB power. It would have been nicer if they put all those power connections on the inside there so they don't hang out over the bed. You're probably gonna have storage under the bed as well. Yeah. You do, as well as drawers down there. So I guess you could utilize that for extra, extra um, wardrobe storage if you want to. Very, very cool. Okay, so I was actually able to catch up with Todd Grubb. So you are the product manager. Yeah, I'm general for manager for Alta. Absolutely. So this is cool. So again, the only reason I even came to look at your product was because I had a dealer that told me how fantastic this product is and how different from almost any other travel trailer, conventionally towed travel trailer on the market. We've all seen three inch thick sidewalls in Riverstone. Yes, We've sir. seen things like that, but to put three inch thick sidewalls in a travel trailer is pretty extraordinary. It is. But you also showed me this right here. What are we looking at? So, and this goes for all the Alta line travel trailers or otherwise, but okay. we use a five inch vacuum bonded laminated roof. And it's foam. Yeah. So really most travel trailers are putting batted insulation up there. Uh, yeah, if it's trust, it's a batted insulation. Mm -hmm. um, I, there's a, you know, there's people using laminated roofs in the, in yeah. the market, but it's, it's a smaller percentage for sure. No, no, that um, is really cool. And then you've pointed out something that I didn't see when I came out last time, because quite frankly, it's not indicated like you might see it indicated on fifth wheels but yes, what's so needs, special it needs to be indicated for sure it's um being that we're just launching these um but these are all come standard with dual pane windows that's insane so that's insane because dual pane windows are significantly more expensive than single pane windows they are they make a huge difference now when you talk about r value the r value difference isn't that different but the actual feel is mm -hmm. if you have sun beaming on any of these other rvs out here with single pane windows it's going to feel like an oven mm -hmm. and it's going to radiate heat into your rv like a heater mm -hmm. dual pane windows when it when the sun's hitting them they feel warm to the touch. They don't yeah. feel hot to the touch. Well, they don't sweat and condense like a single pane window. Oh, absolutely. I'm, well, I'm in Texas heat, so all I yeah. care about is the hot. Oh, and, okay. And yeah. that's super cool. But also, they do add a lot of weight. So you have to add, you have to have a chassis that can support it. Yes. And I've heard some really good things about the construction. So what else can you talk about that, that will surprise me when it comes to how this type of units built okay so you talked about the three inch walls with asdell on both sides and we talked about the five inch laminated roof with floors and this again is across the travel trailer line um they're one by three aluminum floor joists 16 inches on center okay and then we use five eighths tongue or plywood that's glued and screwed just like residential construction okay what's your roofing material that you're using um it's alpha ply um it's got a limited lifetime warranty really um you know, their thing is it's like twice as thick as most of the competitors. So it's like seven mil, I believe. I'm just gonna see if there was a hang tag in here with all that on it, but it's noticeably thicker. Like when you feel it in your hand, it's 
That's really thick. Okay. Uh, two AC is standard or optional in these? On the extreme, two ACs are standard. And, and they're both 15K? Well, yeah, 15K across the entire line. Okay. Regardless, even a little single axle. Very good, very good. Um, but they also, in the extreme line, they have heat pumps standard on them. Oh, wow. So, man, that's crazy. You, yeah. I mean, that's a significantly upgraded unit that people sometimes don't think about. So you're not running your furnace exclusively. You can yeah. draw some of that cold air out and, and actually enjoy the heat from the heat pump. Oh, you can you can heat this with the heat pump, up, you know, up to a, you know, you start getting down way cold. But, I mean, and, and you know, to drive the chill out, man, it'll do it right now. Yep, yep. You um, see the upgraded stoves? You got the GE Profile 4 burner? Yeah, and the 16 4 um, Everchill 12 yep, volt 12 refrigerator. Volt refrigerator. Um, Plus the incredible ceiling heights in here. Right. This, this, this unit is designed to land between a big travel trailer and a destination trailer. Kind of right in the middle. It's kind of a unique animal. There's really nothing that, there other than this at this point. Um, so it's kind of in between price points and it, it offers the towability of a travel trailer, but the you know, the full all season campability of a destination trailer. Well, even some destination trailers don't have three inch thick sidewalls, so you're doing really good there. And dual pane windows, so right. that's really nice. Yeah. Um, and then what else do we do with this? So got the suburban on demand water heater, which is nice. A lot of people are putting the lower end system on, so that's good yeah, to see. Yeah, that's a 60,000 BTU one. Um, you know, the furnace is oversized, it's 40,000 BTUs. That's nice too. Um, and then we have, of course, the 5,000 BTU fireplace. So I got a question. Oh, actually, it's not a question. I've made a point to him because everyone that watches my channel knows that my main focus is towability and safety. And I brought up the whole upgrading the, you know, the suspension and mm -hmm. you're really receptive to it. I was like, you know what? Throw an equalizer on here. Throw something from, you know, Moride or, or Lipper. Throw it on there just to add a little bit shock, of shock dampening mm -hmm. because, you know, as well as you build this, dishes are still going to rattle. Glasses are still going to rattle. Right. And if you can limit any of that while at the same time not having as much stress on the chassis when you're pulling it down the road that's always a good thing sure and he was like hey that sounds doable yeah that's i mean really it's, cool. a, it's a valid point i mean i gotta you know of course running up the ladder the travel trailer is balance the numbers and making yep. it work you know this thing probably is more of a destination type unit than something that gets pulled around like a travel trailer but you did put goodyear endurance tires on it so well, that's sure. nice yeah yeah i yeah. mean the, there's nothing quite like those good years compared to yeah, kind of bombs, right? that's true. That's true. But overall, you have an excellent product. I love the fact that I'm hearing dual pane windows, three inch thick sidewalls, five inch thick laminated roof. I mean, aluminum studs below, no carpet, flush floors, a lot of really good things going on out here. Yeah. And, and, and I would have passed by if somebody didn't tell me. Well, good. I'm glad they tell, stopped you and told you about it. Um, even the basement storage is heated. So there's a duct okay. for the basement storage. It, again, everything's kind of geared if we can make it do well in cold it's going to do well yeah, in Texas yeah. heat. very right? fifth wheel like too in that yeah, sense no. no stairs to climb none of that yeah i like um, it yeah. i like what i'm hearing man that's really cool and i like how you've mitigated the use of lighter weight materials and heavier weight materials to to balance it out so you're i was surprised when i saw the size of this and the gvwr was only in the eleven thousand pound range i thought it was gonna be like the 12 13 or fourteen thousand pound range a dry weight of in the eight thousand pound range that's pretty dang impressive on a unit this size yeah i i, I agree um, that's where the benefit of the lightweight travel trailer, you know, absolutely DNA comes in, I think. Yeah. Well, very cool, man. I really appreciate your time, Todd. Thank you for coming on camera to tell me about this really cool product that you guys have. It also got a uh, Top Choice Award from me, so great. that's really nice. And only 20 of them are going out all over Indiana wow, during the show. Great. You got one. I'm glad it caught, caught your attention. Yeah, perfect. Uh, just so you know, the only options you can put in this thing is you can do uh, either, uh, easy out, fold out sofa or a freestanding cable. Okay. Otherwise, it's what you see is what you get. No, it's really nice. Yeah. Again, appreciate your time. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.